from CNBC.com. Nearly half the U.S. population is without a job showing how far the labor recovery has to go. Well, the government would stop suppressing employment to create an artificial unemployment crisis. That, that would help, but no, here it is. The, or the employment to population ratio, that is the number of employed people as a percentage of the U.S. adult population, plunged to 52.8% in May, meaning 47.2% of Americans are jobless. As the coronavirus-induced shutdown tore through the labor market, the share of population employed dropped sharply from a recent high of 61.2% in January, farther away from a post-war record of 64.7%. According to Torsten Slok, Deutsche Bank's chief economist, quote, to get the employment to population ratio back to where it was at its peak in 2000, we need to create 30 million jobs. Now, that's not just like creating, I mean, the jobs kind of are there. Well, a lot of them, the, the thing is like now, you can't just press pause on a business and then press pause again and expect it to just keep playing smooth. That's that's not how reality works. It's not how jobs work. You know, if a job is taken out because of the forced unemployment crisis, well, if, the, if it's, if you're, you know, bartender, server, you know, you work somewhere for a month or you don't work at your place of, of, of your of business for a month. All right. All right. You know, then uh, you maybe you can come back, but three months, and even with the reopening, like we saw with the tattoo shop where California State LP Chair Mimi Robeson just got uh, the last tattoo that they will ever, uh, ever do there because they're shutting down. They, they just, it's not sustainable anymore. Uh, so these businesses, the lockdown, the, 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 even though it's, it's flat, the curve of tyranny is more or less flattened, you know, the, you, businesses can't survive the up, down, up, down that we're experiencing right now. Investors will look to this week's June jobs report for an update on the pace of the labor market recovery. So next we go to GreenwichTime.com from the Washington Post, how the Fed is driving savers to riskier investments. The Federal Reserve is getting lots of love from the financial markets because it's lowered the short-term rates that it controls to just about zero and has figured out inventive ways to drive long-term rates to ultra-low levels and get some formerly troubled parts of the financial system working smoothly again. The stock market has risen sharply in the past three months, in large part because of the Fed, with the Standard & Poor's 500 index erasing most of the terrifying 34% five-week drop that it suffered from its mid-February all-time high to its March 23 low. And even though retail sales are still well below they, where they were before the pandemic struck and the unemployment rate is much higher, they're still a lot better than they were not long ago, in large part because of the stimulus created by ultra-low interest rates and various pieces of bailout legislation. So. What's my problem? It's that millions of individual investors are being forced into the stock market to get any meaningful income from their savings because they can no longer count on traditional havens such as savings accounts, certificates of deposit, treasury securities, or money market mutual funds. Now, just as a little background on my perspective here, the whole stock market is inflated in general, but now it's especially inflated because as J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said just a couple weeks ago, it's the Fed's liquidity that is propping up the stock market. But there's another dynamic here that you have to consider related to this, which is that it's small businesses that are suffering the most with Corona, not companies being traded on the stock market. It's not Walmart. I mean, if anything, those businesses that are allowed to stay open are getting a more privileged economic status and some of them are doing more business. We've seen this in some of the earlier fights over the economic shutdowns in small towns 
where they said, well, this mom and pop shop has to close, but Walmart stays open. And they were like, well, we're selling the stuff that Walmart is selling in that section. How come they get to stay open? And we, well, and what they did is they had Walmart like rope off parts of the store and say, you can't buy these things here in this set. And then you just go, well, man, if that doesn't tick you off. So now it's not just that it's, it's being propped up by the liquidity. It's being propped up by the shutdowns favoring these companies. And so we go to our next story, another favored economic class that's profiting from this whole shutdown from Wall Street Journal. Big hotel owners stand to gain from a government orchestrated debt relief. Surprise, surprise, them in the military industrial complex and who knows what other, you know, big favored economic classes who pull the strings in Congress. Yes, of course, they're going to profit. So lawmakers and businesses are pushing the U.S. government to offer debt relief to hundreds of small hotel owners who borrowed with the help of bond markets. But the biggest beneficiaries of any assistance could be large real estate owners affiliated with properties that owe troubled hotel debt. According to an analysis by Hotel Union Unite Here International, which analyzed public filings and data from research firm TREP LLC as of June 16. Now, you don't need to understand all of the economics behind the story to see, oh, it's a consolidation of power, of wealth. It's, the, it's right before your eyes, the rich getting richer, and the effect here has to be the poor getting poorer. Now, with the hotels as a whole, uh, an industry, you know, if you're not doing business, uh, you know, and, and hotel bookings are, are way down right now. You know, they're, they're, it's not like they're, although, hey, government subsidies, if you get government bailouts, guess what? Because the government can come in and say, well, this was your income. And because of Corona, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to compensate you and maintain your income there. Or. Uh, uh, but and, and if that's the case, well, now you don't have all of the upkeep costs of the hotel, the staffing and, and the utilities, all of the major costs. They go away, but the profits are still there. Again, socializing losses to the taxpayers, privatizing profits to the specialized or the, the special friends of government. The hotel owner with the most money in these troubled commercial-backed security loans is Monty Bennett, the Dallas businessman, is affiliated with companies including Ashford Hospitality Trust and Bramer Hotels and Resorts that had loans valued at nearly $2.3 billion with special servicers, according to Unite Here's analysis of the TREP data. Meanwhile, Colony Capital, a $50 billion private equity firm run by Thomas Barak, owed about $2 billion, according to the analysis. So Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin acknowledged the CMBS issue at a recent Senate hearing suggested that the administration might need to come back to Congress to work on a potential fix. Yeah, let us get away with this racket for a little while, and then we'll show you how to fix it. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell indicated in House testimony that the issue might be better addressed by Congress. So, of course, a planned crisis comes with costs for everyone involved. The hotel industry was among the hardest hit by the pandemic. And geez, you know, no, this is not caused by the pandemic. It's caused by the fear and the government shutdowns, causing thousands of properties to close and occupancy rates to fall below 25%. Occupancy levels nationwide have been rising for weeks and are now back above 40%, but is still well below that mark in resort hot spots like Orlando, Florida, and Hawaii, and lower in big cities such as Boston and Chicago. I, do you think it's a coincidence that the Libertarian Party announces we're going to have a convention in Orlando, and next thing you know, it's a hot spot, or is that a resort hot spot where a lot of people say, yeah, okay, it's a resort hot spot, not a buyer's hot spot. No, Florida, no, it's a hot state now. That's it, getting back to shutting down. Representatives of the real estate companies either declined to comment or didn't respond to requests for comment. So next very related story comes from CNBC.com. Jeff Cox writes, the Fed is buying some of the biggest companies' bonds, raising questions over why. Hmm. 
Why? Oh, because they want the rich to get richer and the poor to get poor. No shank. Like, just, yeah, duh. The, the, so why? Maybe maybe there's more specific questions, but, you know, you got a knife in your back? Or are you going to spend your time studying the knife or getting it out of your back? We'll spend a little time studying it here, I suppose. The Federal Reserve is continuing to buy corporate bonds following up on a pledge it made in March. Corporate America titans such as Microsoft, Apple, and Home Depot have been among the beneficiaries. Questions have been raised over moral hazard as the Fed buys debt from companies that don't seem to need the central bank's help. And it, I mean, it'd be really, you, I mean, I made this point and it went, you know, semi-viral on Twitter, you know, months ago when they first proposed the $1,200 stimulus payment, but they were borrowing $6,000 for American, you know, well, you're borrowing six thousand dollars on my name. You're giving me twelve hundred dollars. You get the other forty-eight. That's not a good deal for me. Uh, the the bill's going to come due eventually. The effect on the purchasing power of the dollar. All of these things add up. So, how to get the knife out that we see being twisted with Corona? You have to be more economically conscientious. And that means not using the dollar as much as you can. If you can use Bitcoin, crypto, barter, gold, silver, anything else. If you can not get a, a page, if you can get a job that's not paid with a W-2 where your taxes are withdrawn or even just apply for exemption so that they don't do the withholding and, and you can be a, a, you know, make sure that you pay as little in taxes later as possible that you conduct your life in a way that doesn't contribute to the evil of this economic system. And there's nothing wrong with taking from it. Disability, unemployment, welfare, take what you can as long as you're not encouraging the government to take more. Because that means it has less money that it can use to hurt people. When it makes money available for you as an individual, it's that it's an excuse to justify its existence. It's like, oh, look how nice we are. Make it hard for them. Make it expensive for them to, to keep that excuse. Never advocate for, for more welfare or you know more of these government programs because they're, they're, that is encouraging the government to steal more. But taking what you can out of the old system and using it to build the new, that's how we get this knife out of our back that the powers that be dig in and twist to bleed out the middle class, America's working class, using the poor too in there, manipulating everybody so that the rich get poor, or sorry, excuse me, so the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Let's work together. Let's get the knife out of our collective social back, shall we say. Thank <laughs> you.